Hi you guys, this is Adam and Susan, and we are on our fifth, yes, our fifth little module for bowel health. There's so much to talk about with this. And Adam and I have decided that the next time we get together to cut a video, we're gonna actually video our pre-conversation and then this conversation, because it feels like we have really powerful discovery sessions that <laughs> like, oh, you gotta say that. And then now we have to regurgitate it. So be prepared to see that soon. But we just kind of started talking about several different um, things that would be helpful to know from both of us, actually. And we kind of started out with Adam talking about um, how as he's gained trunk control, because I was asking, well, as a quadriplegic, you know, can you actually feel a sensation when you have to go number two, or does that not happen? Is some people different? Um, and so I'm gonna turn it over to him because he started to tell me how he moves different ways, how it's increased his ability to have more successful bowel movements. And um, so I'm just gonna have you talk about that for a little bit. Okay. Um... Let's see. There's definitely kind of a a rhythm to everything, and uh, over the years, I've slowly kind of learned some of the signs uh, when um, when I'm behind on my elimination cycle, and um, when when there's any reason for concern when I leave the house. Like if I do my bowel routine and maybe nothing happens, uh, which is fortunately not common at all for me anymore, but it was in the past. If nothing happens, uh, especially for me, like if I breathe and my, my gut will kind of like gurgle and I know that for me, that's a sign that uh, I need to tread lightly through the day and kind of watch myself a little bit and be, um, really selective of what I eat that day so that the next day when I uh, do my bowel routine, I can maximize my results because, you know, the only thing worse than not going is not going the next day also and possibly the day after that. And it can actually get pretty far out. Uh, some of you probably experienced that. Hopefully most of you haven't. But, um, you know, as soon as you get behind, the opportunity for an inval goes up and obviously it's going to kind of be in the background of your thought process and distract you, uh, you know, and everything else you're doing. And you might have to opt out of certain activities, uh, usually the most fun ones, uh, if, you know, if that's, if an involuntary bowel movement is, is a threat to your day. Right. Well, we were kind of talking about, you know, it's important to look at your stool as somebody that's in a chair, I mean, I think in general it is, but when being in a chair, you know, you get backed up and you, you're not having the ability to move, it makes it that much harder um, to, to get moving again. <laughs> and so if you're noticing, so we're talking about the properties of our stool. And um, Adam was saying how, if he notices that he has a compacted, more dry stool, and nothing after that, then his chances of having an involuntary bowel movement go up. Because you have to be able to see kind of the, the sequence of the training here, like you have a compacted school, stool, and then in addition, to, in that same movement, you have some loose stool behind it, then you know you're like, you, you purged that and your gut's getting back to normal again. Yeah, if, you, so, if, if what you pass is soft, um, you know, not, not liquidy, but, uh, soft, um, chances are you're kind of on schedule because that's, that's something that hasn't been in there for a long time. When you get backed up, your body starts to create mucus to protect itself from toxicity, uh, from those substances. And so when they come out compacted, um, you know that you're behind probably because of dehydration. Uh, but maybe because of, you know, where your intestinal flora might be and how effective it is in breaking down things. Uh, 
but long story short, the mucus is there to protect you to protect you from toxins, uh, which means toxins are present. And uh, the compacted stool uh, can mean several things, but it definitely means you're behind on your on your schedule. Mm -hmm. Schedule and maybe what your diet is telling you. So. Um, you know, we can notice that if we have a dry compacted stool, we really should not be eating dry compacted processed foods. If we have very loose stools, we probably have too much heat in our body. Um, we could be either heavily dehydrated, and that's why we're having heat. We could be super stressed out, creating heat. Um, anger creates a lot of heat. Emotions can, can definitely torment your gut and your gut is your second brain. So if you have loose stools, you need to cool your stomach down and your intestines down by maybe ingesting some, you know, nice cold coconut water or avoiding spicy foods. Um, you know, so we kind of want to train you on looking at your stool and how you might best solve the issue. So if it's super dry, you might need a little more oil in your diet, maybe some fresh olive oil on top of your salad or Sometimes I'll even just do a shot of olive oil, put some salt in there if I feel like my diet um, is too dry. So uh, really pay attention to the qualities of your food and the qualities of it coming out the other end will kind of tell you maybe how you need to adjust your diet. And I think I've told you all, I studied Ayurveda for a while and um, what I love about Ayurveda is it kind of looks at our bodies in a scientific way and we're set up, our physique is set up to digest food most intensely and successfully in the middle of the day at noon. That's when our enzymes and our metabolism and everything is at its peak. So that's when we have the ability to digest and absorb most of our nutrients during the day. It's kind of this hunter-gatherers during the, you know, the evolution of human beings. Um, we slept until the sun came up and then we gathered and foraged and then we ate at noon and then we didn't eat much at night. So that's the time to eat. And if we eat complete meals, um, it gives our stomachs, if we need about four to six hours to fully truly give our enzymes in our stomachs the ability to digest food. So if we're snacking all the time and layering those enzymes that are starting to digest and they can't ever finish, that's actually adding layers to our intestines. And since you're compromised already in a chair and have not the ability for your guts to freely digest and move and, and everything, um, I would advise that it would be helpful to pay attention to if your metabolism is requiring you to have hunger in the middle of meal times, or if you can really have good healthy three meals a day and then let your stomach and digestion do its job to kind of move everything through. I don't know, do you want to add anything to that? Well, yeah, I, th I think uh, another valuable way of, of putting that too is that uh, every time you eat, um, you know, food combination is also a thing. Like if you ate a steak and three oranges, um, your body secretes different enzymatic compounds to break things down in your stomach. Uh, and in your intestines and if uh, certain enzymatic profiles if you will conflict and sometimes nullify each other and that's why certain foods shouldn't be eaten together like oranges and steak or uh, really most protein and fruit together actually um, and when you do that uh, if the enzymes nullify each other in in a sense or so to speak then the food is going to putrefy it, it won't get broken down properly so that food starts to putrefy uh, which definitely produces a lot of acidity and toxicity and your body protects itself uh, on almost all fronts by secreting mucus in the presence of toxicity. So any food that's very acidic and or toxic, I think they go hand in hand, uh, your body's gonna secrete mucus to protect itself from it. So if every time you eat, 
you eat a meal that yields an acidic or toxic and or toxic reaction, your body is going to secrete mucus. So if you're secreting mucus every single time you eat, that mucus uh, goes into your bowels, but it isn't all eliminated and it starts to create layers in your intestinal walls that uh, eventually become like a hardened mucoid plaque that's hard to cut with a knife. And um, obviously you can't uptake nutrients and have a very efficient system if your entire system is coated in something that's hard to cut with a knife. So um, food choice is really important. Um, and uh, like Susan mentioned, there's certain foods that like naturally slow down your digestion. Like, um, you know, if you are having loose stool, one way to slow that down is to eat starch, like a baked potato or mashed potatoes. But uh, if it's compacted, the last thing you want to eat is a potato, you know? And you probably don't want to eat like large portions of red meat or something that is hard for your body to break down completely so that, you know, if you're dried out, compacted, mucus present, then you're going to want to eat more like sattvic foods, like foods that, uh, you know, or live foods that, uh, foods that have a lot of prebiotics actually in them and then supplementing with probiotics helps reestablish the intestinal flora so everything's robust and goes to work on whatever stuff is still lingering in your system and you know properly breaks down the food that follows it one thing you can do to kind of see the health of your gut is to kind of look at your tongue if your tongue has a thick layer of white mucus on it that probably means that your intestines are mucousy um, and that layer just doesn't come off by scraping it off you know because sometimes you can eat ice cream and the next day something will be there but if you find there's a constant film on your tongue that's a sign that, you, that you're probably needing to to switch over to vegetation for a few days also if your tongue's super dry again you're gonna have a dry intestine and you're not getting enough water um, Lemon water will actually help hydrate you more than just drinking water by itself. And some of the other things we talked about are that, you know, doing the, the upside down L, like having somebody massage your stomach while you're laying down can really encourage your bowels to move. Uh, or while you're sitting up if you're doing your bowel program, mm -hmm. you can also do that. And Adam was saying how, um, you know, he, he moves around a lot, kind of helps to get that going, but he also can have complications if he's, what did you say? You said if you have a full bladder, full intestine, and a wound or something, it's like your body's kind of taking on too many things at once, like it can throw you into autonomic reflexia. So if you're wondering why you might be having a spike in blood pressure or a drop, um, that could be a cause. Yeah, hopefully you guys are I don't know if we've covered autonomic dysreflexia yet. We definitely should. Um, hopefully you've been advised about it by your doctor or whatever hospital you were in. Um, and autonomic dysreflexia, I think it's T6 and above, but it, it affects people mostly with cervical spinal cord injuries. And uh, I'll just explain to Susan how if I'm having a bowel related issue and a bladder related issue, maybe a slightly clogged, clogged catheter, uh, my suprapubic catheter, and maybe I'm a little bit constipated because maybe I ate a bunch of carne asada tacos the day before and didn't follow it up enough water. Maybe I had a margarita, you know, very acidic. But, uh, but um, you know, there's those cycles we go through based on what we eat, and most of us don't want a monotone diet where we um, don't explore at all with what we eat. So because of that, uh, unless we do want to eat like rabbits all the time, which definitely helps uh, if you, for elimination, it's good to know the cycles and the indications of, you know, the ebb and flow of that cycle and, and how what we eat really, really has a lot of uh, bearing on that. Yeah, which leading into uh, we wanted to give you a couple tips on some really good, strong recipes to make if you are compacted. 
that will help ease and relieve. Um, you're saying he's saying he's been doing this since he was a young kid, but what's your sauerkraut deal? Yeah. Um, so the strongest probiotic that I've been able to find, uh, you know, whether at the store or making it on my own, um, I learned about it when I was in my late teens, when I, I got really into like colon cleansing and, and a lot of diet related stuff um, in my late teens. And obviously when you study that stuff, probiotics is a big part of it. And prebiotics are important too, but, but um, the strongest probiotic I've ever found is uh, what I refer to as 72 hour uh, sauerkraut and the only two ingredients in 72 hour sauerkraut are salt um you know highly mineralized salt is kind of nice to use like a himalayan salt i like to use and i like to use red cabbage but all you really need is salt and cabbage um, and if you have those two things you need to masticate the cabbage as much as possible whether it's through thousands of nice sl knife slices or a food processor. I have a champion juicer that I use. I take the screen, the juice screen off so that the pulp and the juice all fall straight through. And then it's, it's basically a pulp because um, the more you masticate the cabbage, the more it's broken down, the more exposed surface there is uh, for the fermentation to happen. And the salt, um, the salt basically causes the fermentation and the salinity of it keeps it from putrefying or going bad basically. So uh, we masticate the cabbage, add on average one tablespoon of salt and mix it in really well. We put it in a bowl, put a cloth over that, maybe tape the cloth if, if it's not sitting tightly just so no small little bugs or dust or anything else can accidentally get in there. And each day we take that, that washcloth or towel off and stir, stir the mixture really good. Otherwise, you know, oxygen is a big part of the fermentation process. So anytime you have something fermenting, it's gonna ferment a lot faster on the top. So that layer can ferment too quickly and go bad if you don't start every day. So. You stir the sauerkraut, just once a day is fine, stir it really well, cover it again with the cloth, and after 72 hours, it's ready to eat and or put in the refrigerator, and in the fridge it should last another seven to 10 days, depending on how, how much you may have it outside the refrigerator in between. Um, if you freeze it, it will nullify all the probiotic effect, so that's not much of an option. But uh, in my experience, it's a lot stronger than even homemade kombucha. Mm -hmm. And uh, in terms of the potency of the probiotics, a lot um, stronger than any kimchi that I've ever had and any of the kombucha or um, probiotic drinks that I've ever found in the stores. And a dramatically you know, higher amount than any of the capsulated forms of probiotics that I've taken so much that you know a couple tablespoons a day when it's sometimes uh, like the fourth day it'll be kind of like the strongest fourth and fifth day and during that time it doesn't take much more than a, a tablespoon or two and you can literally like feel it going to work in your gut and it makes you feel really good um and so how much all you need cabbage? is a, so yeah. all you need is a cabbage and salt so it's just very inexpensive very easy to make, uh, you know, if you're someone that has hand function, um, and it's just really effective, and you can, you know, almost anywhere you travel, you'll have access to salt and cabbage, and that's good to remember too, if you're traveling, and you're eating food you're not used to, and subjecting your gut to different bacteria that you haven't been encountering, and you know, a lot of people get issues like that when they travel, so, I. I keep a uh, grapefruit seed extract and uh, apple cider vinegar and some type of probiotic on hand when I travel so that if I'm 
if I'm experiencing stultification of the, of the bowel and things aren't moving, then I can reach for the probiotic or, uh, you know, sometimes when you're in areas where you might drink water or experience bacteria that um, might turn you sideways a little bit, uh, I, w whether it's your bowel or your bladder, um, grapefruit seed extract can go in and zap that. Uh, it can it can stop a um, it can stop a UTI in its tracks, and it also can stop Giardia in its tracks. So that's a very very valuable thing to have is grapefruit seed extract when you travel. So two questions. How much cabbage to salt? Like a cup of cabbage to a teaspoon of salt? The average head of cabbage. Oh, so the whole thing, the like whole a little cabbage. purple cabbage. Yeah, and okay. uh, I would definitely advise taking that, you know, the outer layer of leaves like you typically would because mm -hmm. of whatever residues or, you know, hopefully it's an organic cabbage, but it can still have certain uh, residues from detergents and, and uh, other latent bacteria. So it's kind of nice to peel the layers back a little bit and, you know, chop the stalk off of the bottom, obviously, but you can use the whole cabbage. Okay, and then grapefruit seed extract is like intensely strong. So how yes. many drops of that to like how many? Like so how many I think, you, you know, I would default to the directions on the package. I think it's 10 drops at a time is considered a dose of grapefruit seed extract. I've taken as many as 30 at a time, but um, that's when I was traveling and I got Giardia and I suffered and suffered for almost three weeks. And then uh, that's when I learned about grapefruit seed extract for the first time. And someone told me I should take 30 drops and I did. And I literally didn't need another dose of it. It got rid of Giardia in one shot. Uh, although, so 30 drops is very, very strong. So when I took 30 drops, it kind of messed with my intestinal flora. So I got rid of the Giardia, but then all of a sudden I wasn't digesting very well. So I started doing a lot of juice, prebiotic and uh, probiotic and building back up my intestinal flora. And then I was good to go. So um, a bottle of grapefruit seed extract is definitely under $20. So that's a very, very cheap and quick and effective way to get rid of some really nasty stomach bugs. Good to know. So, okay, hopefully this was helpful and I thank you very much. Um, do you have anything else to say? See you guys next time. See you next time. Thanks. Bye.